How many friends have you made today? Chapter 8. Two to tango, three to get married. Anon is currently in the garden resting his back against the tree. He's just looking out onto the horizon and thought. He doesn't really know what to think anymore. He came to this world thinking that he would get a fresh start, yet he soon found no difference from his world to this one. So, he fell back on his old mentality. To keep everyone at arm's length, to seclude himself. His life was simple, and he was content with it being that way. Then Celestia came. She just would not leave him alone. Always coming by and asking him how many friends he made, always taking the time out of her life to see him, to talk to him. And then she became part of his life, as much as he hates to admit it. She was just that one thing that never left. Every day, he would ready his table for her arrival, and she never missed a day. Then he realized that she's a friend, and a certain hope built inside of him that day. Perhaps things would be different this time. Perhaps he could have a more social life. It was that hope that blinded him, made him forget about all the things the other ponies did to him. How could he have been so naive to think that he could trust another creature? He shouldn't be surprised, actually. In the end, everyone becomes a problem. Yet, why does he hurt so much inside? He knew this would happen, and yet the pain doesn't subside. Why does he not leave, even though his body's screaming at him to just get up and walk to the train station? Perhaps Celestia is a bigger part of his life than he cares to admit. Perhaps that small hope that she created would die here if he were to leave. He doesn't know. He doesn't even have the slightest clue. And to make things worse, he can't stop thinking about what he said to both of them before he left. Princess. Why did he add their titles? He knows exactly why, and it causes his heart to ache from the thought alone. He did it to hurt them. He wanted to hurt them in a very personal way. By adding their title, he alienated them, just as he has been alienated many times before. He knows their weaknesses. Celestia spent an entire day telling him how she detests her title. She told him that one of her small dreams was to hear Twilight call her by her name. That they've known each other for so long, she sadly hoped that Twilight would drop her title all on her own. But that dream never came true. Twilight still continues to call her princess. That's all she ever was. Her teacher and ruler. Anon knows all too well that he struck him in the heart with what he said. While it will hurt Celestia, he isn't ignorant in the fact that Luna is probably faring worse. Being her only friends, to have him alienate her in such a way will tear her apart. In the moment, he thought it would make him feel better. Yet as he sits here, his heart hurts more than he could bear. What is he gonna do? Can he truly forgive them for what they've done? He brings his knees to his chest as he rests his chin on one. A sad sigh leaves him. He doesn't know, and that troubles him the most. Celestia sits upon her throne as she has done many times before. However, this is the one day that she closed her court. The guards can feel that something is on the forefront of their leader's mind. She just sits on her throne, face blank of all emotion. They don't know when it'll happen, but something big is gonna take place. Celestia simply keeps her gaze on the throne room door, her mind thinking back to the few hours that have passed. Luna and herself sitting in a state of shock in Anon's room after he left. Those parting words still burned in their minds. It didn't need to be said. They knew that what they did was horrible. But that still doesn't mean that they didn't speak. This is a prank! Luna looks to her sister with a frightened look. You put Anon up to this, right? No. Celestia answers as she hardens her princess mask. Luna feels her eyes clamp shut as her tears start to flow down her cheeks. No, she hasn't lost her only friend. Th this can't be happening. She quickly looks to her sister in hope as a thought pops into her mind. He will forgive us, correct? Anon will surely not leave us. She tries to convince herself. Celestia's mask holds firm, even as her tears roll over her cheeks. I don't know, sister. Her bottom lips started to tremble. I honestly don't know. It wasn't too long after that Luna teleported herself to her room. Celestia can't blame her either. She would have done the same, but she waits here in the hope that Anon will come to her. She doesn't know if he already left, but she can't stand the thought if he did. She knew that Anon would react badly, yet she still did what she did. She wouldn't even blame him if he chose to hate them. But she had to know. Now that she does, she can begin with other things, even if Anon never accepts her or Luna as his friends again. She will make sure that justice is brought to those that have wronged him, his list being a proclamation of their guilt. No ponies above the law, not even herself. And to think that the elements would cause a non-harm made her sick to her stomach. 
While she didn't know what Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash did to Anon, she does have an understanding of what Rarity, Applejack, and Twilight did to him. Twilight. She hangs her head in shame of those memories. How did she fail so much as a teacher? It's gonna hurt, but Celestia already plans for what to do. As for Rarity and Applejack, well, she's still working on those. Celestia will sit here and plan, just waiting and hoping Anon will come back. Blue Blood is having a great day. When he woke up this morning, he spoke to his maid without yelling at her. And this is something huge for him, and he knows that his auntie will be proud. He feels so good right now that he's in the garden to look out for some of his animals to talk to. He just knows that they'll be interested to hear this good news of his. As Blue Blood makes his way towards the garden, he decides that he doesn't want a guard as an escort. While his auntie sends one with him wherever he goes, he feels that he could handle himself today. And if anything, this morning is proof that he's growing. As he moves through a patch of bushes, he takes notice of something on the wind. Voice? He lowers himself closer to the ground and sneaks towards the sound. Quickly, he ducks behind some nearby bushes. He looks over and spots some pony that he knows. It's Anon. Why is he out here? So I have no idea what to do. He hears Anon speak. As Blue Blood looks over the bush more, he spots Philomena resting on Anon's knee. Why is Philomena outside? She usually just stays in Auntie's room. Philomena looks over towards him as Anon follows her gaze. Blue Blood ducks behind a bush again in a failed attempt at hiding. Blue? Anon calls out. Well, oh, darn, he's found. Blue Blood rises to his full height and walks through the bush towards Anon. Uh, hello. He says, trying to hide his embarrassments. So what brings you out here? Anon asks, ignoring the fact that Blue Blood was eavesdropping. I, I, uh... He looks around, unsure. He takes a few deep breaths and tries what he did this morning. I talked to a mate this morning, all by myself. Anon gives him a small smile. <laughs> Good job, Blue. Blue Blood feels a little more at ease now. He walks closer to Anon and takes a seat in front of him. He reaches out and pats Philomena with his hoof. Why is Philomena here? Blue Blood asks. Anon shrugs. I don't know. I was sitting here alone and the bird just landed on my knee. Blue Blood looks appalled. What? This isn't just some bird. This is Philomena. Anon looks at the bird as it gives him a nod. He reaches out and scratches the bird under the chin. Oh, Philomena, huh? He speaks to the bird. She leans into his hand more as she gives a soft coo. What is it? Anon asks. She's a phoenix. Blue Blood answers. My auntie told me that she found her a few years before Discord's reign. Anon lifts his eyebrow as he looks at Philomena. That would make this bird as old, if not older, than Celestia. Oh, so this bird is immortal as well? Blue Blood nods with pride. And the fact that he knows all this makes his day seem even better. Yep, she's been with Auntie for a very long time. Anon feels a small chuckle leave him as he looks at Philomena. Well, I guess that explains why he came here then. Philomena nods at him. So, why were you talking to her? Blue Blood asks. I just needed someone to talk to about a problem. Anon answers. Well, what about Auntie? Why not just talk to her? He asks, confused. Anon hesitates some as he looks to Philomena. Uh, it's just that she's the problem. It's complicated to explain. Why? Uh, I don't think it's right to burden you with my troubles. Anon states. But I asked. That still doesn't mean that I should. Why? Anon buries his annoyance. He knows that Blue Blood is only curious. Okay, uh, where I come from, everyone keeps it to themselves. So, how do you solve problems? Anon rubs the back of his neck. A lot of us just solve it on our own. Blue Blood isn't really sure how to take that statement. A single pony can't solve every problem. His auntie told him that if he ever needs help for something that he couldn't do, then he should ask a pony to help. So, if you solve things on your own, then why are you here talking to Philomena? Blue Blood sure knows how to ask the right questions. Even though they're simple in nature, they are really throwing Anon in for a loop. <sighs> because I, I don't know what to do. Anon says with a sigh. Shouldn't you ask for help then? No. But why? Anon rubs his face some. <sighs> Humans don't like to ask for help. Well, that doesn't really make any sense. So, how are you supposed to fix your problem if you can't ask for help or solve it yourself? Anon slumps against the tree some, as Philomena flies off of his knee and lands on Blue Blood's back. <sighs> what do you want me to say, Blue? I don't know how to fix my problem. Well, it sounds like you need help. That word again. Why does it fill Anon with such anger? I don't need help. 
Every pony needs help sometimes, Blue Blood says. When I get hurt, I talk to the doctor. And when I'm hungry, I see the cook. What the hell is going on here? How is Blue Blood making so much sense right now? Anon is actually feeling like the idiot here. It's not the same thing, Blue. Again, it's... It's hard to explain. So what's the problem? At this point, it's really starting to seem like Blue Blood won't let up if Anon doesn't say something. I don't know why, but I really love this version of Blue Blood. There's just something about him that makes me smile. Anyways, let's get on to our very cheerful donators. Top donators, TacoCat598, Peter Coltard, J Tin Man, Darkseid, Ponyman, and Gauntlet. Zar630, Strix, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Drake Love Dragon, Pastel Skies, Dospo, Madman Stan, Delta Omega, Jack Cadge, Rune Scythe9852, Hunter Norman, Dash of Evergreen, Rhiny Dragonwolf, Tal Rasha, The Toilet Snake, Sword Brother and Mordred, Ron and Wandering, Random Person Man Guy, Easy, Skyochia, Leslie Perkett, Jordan Peterson, Crimson Kits and A9, Lightskin, Monster Kitty, Tim Bob, Starlight Glimmer, Lightning Blitz, Squiddy Boy, David E. Sanchez, Soul Dragon, Gaggy, Trey, Shadow Drake, Joe Piercy, Hunter Mara, Alex F, Rainbow Dash, Teal Anderson, TV Killer, John Becker, Leon Reynolds, Raven Speedster, Zach Rakao, Mr. ECU, Edgar Garcia, One Kingdom One, Nissa Rusan, Vazuri, Dyslexic Character Sheets, Just a Random Boy, Hodrick Plunkart, A Crazy Person, Ponyman365, Neapolitan, Six of Nine, Shyfire, Stamp, and Diane Baseri. Thank you all very much for watching this video, and live life to the fullest.